Hello and welcome back. Today we will extend our discussion of AC circuit analysis using KCL and KVL, is the, where the systematic application of KVL is the mesh current method and the systematic application of KCL is the node voltage method. So first, let's review the mesh current method and node voltage method. The first thing you should realize is it's almost identical to what you did in DC circuits. The main difference is that we now are doing it with phasers impedances or complex numbers so the first steps are to label all the unknown mesh currents clockwise in each mesh and then assign polarity on all the the passive circuit elements not just the resistors so that would be inductors capacitors and resistors so that they obey the passive sign convention with respect to the labeled mesh currents so then you have to make some decisions to determine whether you need to have super meshes or dependent sources so are there current sources? No, then you just use KVL, similar to Ohm's law, to write the equations for each mesh. If there are current sources in outer branches, then you label those meshes with the value of the current source, either clockwise or counterclockwise with the current value, and you don't do KVL. If there are current sources shared between meshes, that means you have a super mesh, and now you're going to have to write a KCL and a KVL equation for the super mesh. The next thing you need to consider is, are there dependent sources? If there are, then you will have a constraint equation as well, where you write the dependent source controlling variable in terms of the mesh currents. And finally, once you have all of the equations, you now use your calculator to solve the system of equations as we talked about in the previous lecture. So next we will examine the flow chart for the node voltage method. So the first thing you're going to do is label all of the non-reference nodes, which means everything but ground, as a node variable like V1, V2, and V3, and then label ground at the bottom of the circuit. If the current is not given for a branch in the circuit, then we're going to label the current leaving the node at each node so that we can label all the elements to obey the passive sign convention. Are there voltage sources if the answer is yes? If the voltage sources are tied to ground, then you label the node above that voltage source as a either po positive or negative voltage rise or voltage drop based upon the polarity of the voltage source. If there are voltage sources not tied to ground, then those will be super nodes. And so now you have to do the special process for super nodes, which means that you have to apply KCL and KVL at the super nodes. Note that if you have a voltage source tied to ground, you don't do KCL at the nodes above the voltage sources. Now, any node that does not have a voltage source, you use KCL, V equals IZ, for each of the passive circuit elements to write the equations for each node except for ground. Are there dependent sources? If the answer is yes, then you're going to have a constraint equation for each dependent source as well. And now that you have all of the equations, you can use your calculator to solve for the simultaneous system of equations to find the unknown node voltages. Lecture 4-1, AC circuit analysis, mesh current, and node voltage methods. Our learning objectives is upon the um, completion of this lecture, students should be able to use the node voltage method to solve a circuit for unknown voltages and currents, and use the mesh current method to solve a circuit for unknown voltages and currents given that the circuit is either in sinusoidal steady state in the time domain or the frequency domain and be able to convert it from the time domain to the frequency domain. Example one, for the following circuit, use the node voltage method and mesh current methods to write enough equations to solve for the unknown node voltages and mesh currents. So first note that omega is two radians per second. We have two sources and they have the same frequency. So now that we know omega, we need to write the impedance of the inductor as J omega L or J times two times two, which is J four ohms, and the impedance of the capacitor as negative J over omega C, which is negative J over two times 0 0.1. So the impedance of the capacitor is negative J five ohms. So next we will take this circuit drawn in the time domain and convert it to a circuit drawn in the frequency domain by writing the sources as phasors and the elements as 
impedances. So the source on the left is 10 angle, zero degrees. Then we have an inductor that is J4Os. Then we have a current source in the middle that is two with an angle of negative 90 degrees because it's a sine, not a cosine. Then we have a one ohm resistor, a four ohm resistor, a voltage source with a value of five with an angle of negative 45 degrees, and the capacitor with a value of negative J5 ohms. So next we're gonna label the nodes V1 and V2, and we're going to write KCL at V1 and KCL at V2. KCL at V1 is V1 minus 10 over J4 plus V1 minus V2 over one, which equals two with an angle of negative 90 degrees. KCL at V2 is V2 minus V1 over one plus V2 minus five with an angle of negative 45 degrees over four, which equals V2 over negative J5 and that equals zero. So now I'm putting this in your calculator. You will get that V1 is 12.35 minus J17 volts and V2 is 8.08 .08 minus J 15.65 volts or 21 with an angle of negative 54 degrees and 17.61 with an angle of negative 63 degrees. So finally, we write the answers in the sinusoidal steady state or the time domain, and we get V1 of t is equal to 21 cosine 2t minus 54 degrees, and V2 of t is equal to 17.61 cosine of 2t minus 63 degrees. So next to apply the mesh current method, we're gonna assign clockwise currents I1, I2, and I3 for each mesh. I2 minus I1 equals two with an angle of negative 90 degrees. That's our super mesh equation. Then we have J4I1 plus I2 minus J5 times I2 minus I3 equals 10. That's KVL for the super mesh. Then we have negative J5 times I3 minus I2 plus four times I2, four times I3, plus five with an angle of negative 45 degrees. And we set it equal to zero. So when we solve for I1, we get that I1 is 4.27 plus J 0.59 amps. I2 is 4.27 minus J 1.41 amps. And I3, is 1.14 minus J3 amps. In polar form, I1 is 4.31 with an angle of eight degrees. In polar form, I2 is 4.5 with an angle of negative 18 degrees. And in polar form, I3 is 3.21 with an angle of negative 69 degrees. Finally, in the sinusoidal steady state, I1 of t is 4.31 cosine of 2t plus 8 degrees. I2 of t is 4.5 cosine of 2t minus 18 degrees. And I3 of t is 3.21 cosine of 2t minus 69 degrees. Example two, for the following circuit, use the node voltage method to solve for the unknown node voltages. Notice that we have a voltage source 20 with an angle of 60 degrees that is not going to be tied to ground because ground is at the bottom of the circuit. So we are going to have a super node. So the first thing we do is we label ground and then KVL at the super node is V1 minus V2 equals 20 with an angle of 60 degrees. Next, we are going to write an equation for KCL at the super node. V1 minus 15 over four plus V1 over J4 plus V2 over negative J equals five with an angle of 15 degrees. And now we solve the system of equations and we get V1 equals 10.05 plus J15 volts in a rectangular form, 18 with an angle of 56 degrees and E to the J 0.98 volts in polar form. V2 is 0 0.05 minus J 2.32 volts or 2.31 with an angle of negative 89 degrees in angle notation or 2.31 e to the negative J 1.55 radians in exponential notation. Thank you for coming to Mesh Current Method, Node Voltage Method, AC Circuit Analysis. Please come back again.